Hey, Pat, why are we in the lab today? You said something about a rice bowl, so I brought my appetite. Oh, hey, Zach, uh, yeah, I did say rice bowl, but what I meant was the, the maximum theoretical specific gravity of an asphalt mixture. Well, that's confusing and I'm still hungry. I cannot help you with being hungry, but I do want to talk to you today about the AASHTO T209 theoretical maximum specific gravity test for asphalt mixtures. So I want to talk to you today about the AASHTO T209 Theoretical Maximum Specific Gravity Test for Asphalt Mixtures. It has lots of different names. It has like the Rice Test, the Max Gravity Test. And GMM. GMM is one. Some specifications even call it the TMD or the Theoretical Maximum Density. That sure is a lot of names. It is a lot of names, but they all pretty much are the same thing and it's the same process. So the maximum specific gravity is an important test because we are going to take this mixture and measure it in such a way that it would appear to have no air whatsoever. All the air would be out and it's the maximum amount it could possibly ever be compacted to with no air. We can then take that value and compare it to compacted specimens and calculate either the air voids or the density. So like when we designed to 4% air voids. Exactly. So we mentioned a rice bowl. You did and I'm still hungry. <laughs> I can't help you with that. But the rice bowl or the pycnometer, this is the pycnometer or the rice bowl that we're gonna use for the test right here. Along with a shaker table, a vacuum pump, a balance, a water bath. That's quite the setup. It is, it's a lot of equipment. And there's another method that uses a flask, but we're not gonna talk about that today because we're gonna use the bowl method. Okay, so let's talk about the specimen. The specimen that we're gonna use here has been spread out and cooled. So, not compacted? No, not compacted. We call this loose mix. So, this mix is cooled to the touch, and we spread it out and break it up into smaller particles so that we can, we can test it. We want to make sure that there's no clumps of fine particles that are more than a quarter of an inch. So, how much do we need? Oh, good question. It depends on the nominal maximum aggregate size of the mix that we're testing. This is a 12.5 millimeter mix that we're testing today, so we need about 1,500 grams. Okay, let's move on to the test. Okay. So the first step is we need to get the mass of the pycnometer. Most laboratories calibrate their pycnometers at least once a month, and they get the weight in air, and they get the weight underwater and keep that recorded. So let's verify the weight in air of this pycnometer. So it looks like it is 2,116.5 grams, and that checks. So next we're going to add the loose mix into the pycnometer. So just dump it in? Well, kind of, but not really. We don't want to make a mess. So what if we drop a piece? That's not a big deal because we haven't pulled the mass of the material in air yet. So now that we have the material all loaded into the pycnometer, we need to take the mass of the material and the pycnometer in air. Looks like 4,454.2 grams. Okay, excellent. So the next step is, is that we're going to add enough water to the pycnometer to cover the material by about an inch. Just from the tap or distilled water? No, 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 no neither one, neither one. We're actually going to use water from the water bath because it's already very close to 25 degrees Celsius that we need. Okay. Is that enough? No, just a little bit more. That's good, that's good. Okay, so the next step is is that we're going to vacuum all the air out of the container. Wait, like a vacuum cleaner? Isn't that going to suck up all the water and asphalt too? No, 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 not like a vacuum cleaner. We're going to use the vacuum pump to suck all the air out of the container, and it will get all the air that's trapped underneath those asphalt particles underneath there and take all the air out of the container. Okay, I see. The next step is, is we're going to put the container on the shaker table, which we'll talk about in a minute, put the lid on top, we'll start the vacuum, and we'll suck all the air out. 
So that hose goes to the pump, which sucks out the air and creates the vacuum. Exactly, exactly. So we're going to clamp the bowl in place, put the lid on, and then we'll be ready to start the vacuum. So how do we know when we have enough vacuum? Oh, great question. We read the manometer to make sure that we get ourselves down to 27 and a half millimeters of mercury, plus or minus two and a half. Then we'll turn on the shaker table and wait 15 minutes. Ooh, can I press start? Of course. So once we got down to vacuum pressure, the device we have here automatically started the shaker table. You notice it's not shaking very much, but you can feel that it's shaking. Sure can. Now it's not required to have a shaker table in the specification. You can agitate it by hand, but be sure make it easier. Okay, so now that we have it off the shaker table, there's a few fines that are floating on the top here. So hand me that solution and that rod. This is a wetting agent here. We're just gonna dip a little bit of that in there and we'll stir this and it makes those fines drop to the bottom. Next, we're gonna put the container into the water bath so that we can get the weight of the container and the materials suspended in water. We're going to lower it in very slowly so that we don't introduce air back into the mixture. Set it into the holder. And we wait for it to settle. Waiting, waiting. How long do we have to wait now? <laughs> Just 10 minutes this time. OK, time's up. Looks like it is 2,700 and 11.2 grams this time. Yep, record that. Done. Okay, next we're gonna pull the sample out of the water bath, pour off the water and discard the sample. So I guess we're done then. Oh, no, no, no. We still have to calculate the GMM. Remember all those masses you wrote down? Right, the mass of the sample in air and underwater. Yes, and don't forget the weight of the pycnometer in air and water as well. Right, I've already subtracted those out. Excellent, excellent. So the maximum specific gravity is the mass of the material in air divided by the difference between the mass of the material in air and the mass of the material underwater. So if I take the mass of the sample in air, which is 2,337.6, mm -hmm. and divide by the difference of the mass of the sample in air and underwater, mm -hmm. which is 962.7, mm -hmm. I get a GMM of 2.428. That sounds right to me, and I'm glad you carried it to three decimal points. Well, duh. You always carry the specific gravity to three decimal points. Yeah. I paid attention. Excellent. Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you found something interesting. Don't forget, click that subscribe button down there, probably the like button too, and come back to see more training in your pocket.